it's Kelly from Pins and Needles Kits and we are here with our December kit. We are going to be making cute little wine totes or gift bags, however you would like. I've got my wine bottle in here. So let's see what's in our kit. Put that over here. Let's open her up and see. So we're going to be using an Atkinson's Designs pattern. It's called Bubbly Bags and there's three different sizes and a couple of different um, appliques. So um, it's a really quick, easy, fun project. I think you'll really like it. We have two pieces of fabric here, one for the outside, one for the lining, and then also your spool of thread. You're going to get a zipper because the handle is actually zipper, so I'm going to show you how to make that. And um, a cute little bookmark for your pattern books and whatnot. You're also going to get a, an iron-on interfacing, and then also this is uh, Peltex fusible, so you'll be using that as well. And then we have a nice little gift in here for you. And this is from Quilt Dots. And it is either a tag for your rotary cutter, if you'd like, or you could use it on a wine bottle. And it has a really cute saying on it. It says, don't drink and quilt. And these are actually interchangeable. So um, like I have one on here that says Quilting Diva and I do have my Don't Drink and Quilt on my necklace. So Quilt Dots is a really fun company. You can go to their website and check out their things. They have jewelry, rings, bracelets, all kinds of stuff and hundreds and hundreds of dots. So um, check those out and let's get started on our project. Okay, so this month we're trying something new. We have two different colorways. So we have the teal and the taupe and then we also have the cute little Santa with the red lining and um, we put it on Facebook. You could choose which one you wanted. If you didn't choose, you would just get whichever random one came in the mail to you. So let's show you how this works. We're doing the large, the, the pattern has three different sizes, um, and so we're gonna do the large tote. These make great gift bags, wine totes, all of that. So what we have here is we have our two pieces. This is our outer and then our lining cut to size, and then we have cut out our fusible um, interfacing and ironed it on and so it tells you exactly how to do it um, in the pattern but I just kind of wanted to show you this is the the outer one and it has one extra piece of interfacing that the other one doesn't have and you want to make sure that you fuse it really well and I can see that I didn't quite fuse this well so I'm going to just do a little bit more ironing on it a little steam make sure that it's all on there the instructions are really really good Terry Atkinson does a great job with her patterns. We've used them before. Okay, I'm going to set the lining aside because we really don't need that till the very end. And then we're going to get our Peltex. And there's lots of different brands of this that you can use. I think the pattern calls for something called Stiff Stuff. And um, this is just something I've used a lot, so I thought it would be a good one to use. So we're going to take the two pieces that we've cut for the um, middle of the bag. We'll just take this one here. And we're going to press it so that it kind of sticks. Oops. Start, start over. I need okay, so we're going to take the Peltex that we've already cut, pre cut, and this is actually fusible on one side. So we're going to lay it down with the fusible side against the interfacing. And then I always use a pressing cloth because if your iron's too hot, it can stick to that Peltex and you might um, have it stuck to your iron. That wouldn't be a good thing. So we'll just iron this down takes a little bit of heat and a little bit of steam and we just want it to stick a little bit because we're actually going to sew this down in just a minute Let's see if it got any oh yeah that stuck really well all right and then in the middle here we have two small pieces and we're going to butt them up against each other and the way that she has all this it works really well so that when you want to fold the bag up it just folds right in on itself and um, with all these pieces cut individually folds really well so you only use this for the outer part of the bag it's not going to go on the lining Get our last piece okay. my iron is talking to me Alright, 
let's see what we have. Yeah, that's stuck on there well enough. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get my sewing machine out. We're going to turn this over. Actually, we're going to sew from this side. We're going to sew about an eighth of an inch all the way around this. So let me get my sewing machine and we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to sew an eighth of an inch around the bottom and then also around each of the side pieces. Now, whatever you put in the bobbin, whatever thread you put in the bobbin is what's going to show on the front. So I actually have a, um, just a neutral color in my bobbin right now. Okay, we're going to pivot. And this is a little bit harder with this really stiff stuff, but you can do it. You just kind of fold it up. It's always interesting to sew standing up. <laughs> All right, and then we'll just back stitch a little bit here at the end. And then, so we've sewn the bottom on, and now we'll do the same for each of the side pieces. Okay, when you cut out the lining, you should have a piece left about this size. Makes it perfect for our wine bottle applique. You will get a piece of um, fusible to, to trace onto, and there's three patterns um, in the middle there for a wine bottle, a wine glass, and a martini glass. So we're going to use the wine bottle. So you just lay this with the um, paper side up and trace it with a pen or a pencil. And then we're going to iron it on to the back of our fabric. Let's see. Let me go this way with it. Looks like you have enough left to do a couple of appliques with it. It doesn't take long for this to fuse. Alright, then we'll cut it out. I've got some scissors. Sorry. So we're going to cut this out on the line. And if you do hand uh, embroidery or if you have an embroidery machine, it would be really cute to personalize this wine bottle. You could um, put a name or Merry Christmas or whatever holiday you happen to be separate, uh, celebrating. Can't talk today. Cut this out. We have our wine bottle cut out. And then we're going to peel the paper off the back of it. Maybe. There we go. All right. And then we're going to put this on and just kind of center it. You can measure around it. I'm just going to eyeball it a little bit, make sure it's straight. And then you will press it again. And then the instructions say you can either straight stitch around it or do a zigzag. So there's a lot of different things. There's all kinds of decorative stitches that you can use to applique with. I'll probably just do a quick little zigzag for you. Let me get my machine over here. So I have used my Wonder Clips to roll up the other side just to kind of hold it because I don't have a lot of space on this machine. I have a bigger machine that I probably wouldn't have to do that at all, but for this one it's definitely needs to be done. I usually start in the bottom area of the applique so that when I finish off it's not any place that's super noticeable like up at the on the sides. And I'm just going to zigzag. I'm not even going to do a, a satin stitch. I'm just going to do a quick little regular open zigzag on this. Just something to hold it down and keep the raw edges from from fraying. So I finished my applique and it looks really cute. I just love this fabric with these cute little triangle Santas. This is from Cotton and Steel, their Christmas collection. And then the other fabric that's in the kit is a Japanese fabric. I think it's by Coco and really cute too. It's kind of a cotton linen. So next we're going to make the handles and the handles are made out of the zipper. And what you want to do is you want to cut underneath the pull. And you want to usually use some of your not so good scissors. <laughs> and you definitely want to be using a polyester zipper, not a metal zipper. All right, and you just put this aside. And then you're going to pull the zipper apart. 
and then you you take and put them opposite of each other so the teeth are on the outside okay then we put a zipper foot on our machine and I need to change my thread and we're going to be sewing right down next to the teeth on each side to hold it all together so this is a 22 inch zipper but if you do a smaller zipper you can do two different colors and get a cute look that way as well so I put um, my zipper underneath my zipper foot and on my machine you move your needle all the way to the left and I'm just going to sew down the left side This is nice because you don't even really have to pin it. Santa's little boots are navy, so I thought the blue zipper would be really cute with that. All right, and we're going to turn it around and do the other side. really cute and I want two 10 inch pieces so I'm going to measure this out two, three, four, five. Two inches. and I have a little measuring on my tray table but I also have one on my table as well it's um, a sticks on I just got it like at Home Depot it's kind of nice that way you don't have to go searching every time for your measuring okay so I have two pieces and now I want to put this on my bag so we're going to take these clips off open this back out and we're going to measure in two and three quarters and so we'll pin it here and here and I need to go get me a tape I need to get actually a seam gauge so that I can make sure that I have it in the right place so we'll do this on both ends and then sew it down so I've um, used my wonder clips to hold these in place and I actually had just a neutral color in my bobbin and then I had the blue on the top I really don't want that neutral color to be on top so when you if you've done that when you put the zipper um, handles on make sure that the bobbin is facing you and then when it opens up that's not the part that's going to be seen. So I'm just going to base these down, about three quarters of an inch down. And do that for both sides. Okay, so we have our handle sewn on. We're going to take our lining now that we've already put our um, interfacing on and we're going to line these up and we're going to clip the top edges and you'll sew a rather large seam allowance. It tells you in the pattern. almost finished with our bag. It's a really fun quick project. We like that around here because we're always super busy. I think I'll change back to my red thread and sew this up. So we've sewn our seam allowance on both ends and now we're going to turn this right side out and press the ends. Okay, then next we're going to sew an eighth of an inch all the way around the entire bag. So I'm 
gonna start over here at the top. Change my presser kit. I'm gonna lengthen my stitch a little bit. just do this all the way around and then we're going to come back and sew about one inch down top stitch on each end. Here we're going to do our top stitching. Already done the other side. And then we're going to put our bag together. Okay, okay so I have, um, have this right sides together and when you fold it Remember how we put two pieces in the bottom with that split in it? It's so that it will fold nice and flat and you actually get a pleat here at the bottom. And so we're going to leave that pleat in. We're going to clip it and clip this. And you want to start sewing on both sides from the top down so that you make sure it's nice and even on the top. So we're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance on the top and we're also going to back stitch at the beginning and ending. So we're sewing that pleat into our seam. Now we'll do the other side. So you'll see how when we fold it, it just nat naturally goes in there. Start up here at the top. almost make this right before the party you're going to. <laughs> I've been known to do that a time or two. And so the last step, you can either serge these edges or you can just do a quick zigzag with your sewing machine, which is what I'm going to do. I'm trimming off the threads change to a zigzag and I better change my foot or I'm going to break a needle. I have my quarter inch foot on. There we go. Okay, and we're just going to zigzag on and off the edge. So I finished finishing off my edges. Now I'm going to reach in, grab the bottom, and this is the hardest part because this stuff is really stiff. Sometimes if you have a hard time with the stiffness, you can steam it a little bit, and that will soften it up for until it cools off, make it easier to turn. You can also use, there's a product called Soft and Stable. There's several different things you can use, and Soft and Stable is actually very easy to manipulate. my bag. See how cute it is in the corners with that little part caught in the edges. Okay, and then I would press my bag. And in fact, I might just go ahead and do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to fold the end, edges in and press it really quickly. Have it turned and pressed super cute I just love it and you can make there's three different sizes so depending on whatever you're doing and then there's the other colorway I think they both are really cute you have one for Christmas one for New Year's and we hope that you will like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel 
and we'll be putting more videos on soon and we have lots of good information on our Facebook page and we do giveaways too so like us on Instagram as well. Have a great day.